Hi and welcome to Kiln IQ with me Henko. This is part 2 of the basics of drying. Factors affecting moisture movement in kiln drying. Factors affecting moisture movement and drying. Number 1. Species. The species determines the limits of how high the temperatures can go or how big the depression can be before damage to wood fiber occurs. Number 2. The dry bulb or the pushing force. Increasing the dry bulb increases the air's ability to hold or draw moisture. A dry bulb increase is normally closely followed by an increase in the wet bulb temperature due to increase in moisture movement from the inside of the wood to the outside. Number three, wet bulb depression or pulling force. By increasing the wet bulb depression, an increase in the sucking force exerted on the wood fibers occurs. It is managed or maintained by moisture removal from the air through venting or dehumidification or by adding moisture to the air by water or steam spray. Managing air moisture is one of the most critical factors to control in a kiln. Number four, moisture content percentage. That's the amount of moisture that needs to be moved out of the timber. Number five, kiln dynamics or balance. This refers to the heating capacity, airflow capacity, dehumidification or venting capacity. These must be in balance and suited to the species you are drying. So what happens if there is too much dry bulb or the temperature is too high? One of two things can happen. Number one, if there is not enough moisture ready to evaporate from the wood surface and the EMC is very low, the wood surface will dry out too rapidly causing case hardening or surface checking. This normally happens when dry bulb increases too fast during startup. The dry bulb should be ramped up slowly. The second thing that can happen is that there is more moisture coming off than what can be vented out. The wet bulb actual will be running way above set point or the vents will constantly be open because venting cannot keep up with the evaporation rate. Open vents reduces airflow through the stacks and uses more energy. The dry bulb should be reduced or the vent setting increased to match the actual wet bulb temperature. So what happens if the vent set point is set too low? Well, it's almost the same as too much dry bulb, but not quite. The excessive venting with good venting capacity will take more moisture from the surface than what is coming out. This forces the evaporation front deeper into the timber increasing the moisture gradient and drying stresses. Remember, you are not drying free water out of a saucer. Trying to take more moisture away than what is coming out will eventually break fiber bonds, creating stresses, checks, deformation and downgrade. No amount of reconditioning can really fix this. The drying process is essentially a balancing act. If the kiln's heating, airflow and venting capabilities are not in balance with each other and with the volume and type of timber you want to dry, it becomes more and more difficult to dry correctly. It is also influenced by other external factors like stacking, loading and baffling amongst others. The operator needs to understand this to be able to identify the influence these factors have on each other, enabling him to fine tune a kiln within these constraints. This requires a certain feel that can only really be acquired through experience and a mentor pointing them out. Balancing kiln constraints mean taking away moisture at the same rate as what the lumber safely and willingly will part with at that energy transfer level and maintaining it effortlessly. This is done through monitoring the kiln's constraints and balancing it out with drying schedule optimization. This concludes the two-part series on the basics of drying. I trust that you now have a basic understanding of EMC, how it relates to dry and wet bulb, and how changes in the dry and wet bulb can affect drying rate and kiln control. Thank you for joining. Please keep your questions coming. Till next time, saw straight and dry flat.